Today's episode is sponsored by Storyblocks. So every now and then I'll have people reach out to me who are just starting out with film, who are either a little bit disappointed or confused with how their initial images have turned out. So just wanted to make this video to talk about a few things that I think are really important to understand that'll help you enjoy this medium a little more and potentially save you from some headaches. So I think it's safe to say that a lot of people who are trying out film for the first time probably have some sort of experience working with digital and you certainly get used to the way that things are in that world. And you know, it's easy the first time you work with film to kind of have these certain expectations just based off of either other work you've seen or things you've read. And you know, sometimes the results can be very different, even, you know, disappointing, even confusing. So uh, today I wanna try and clear a few of these things up. So the first place I wanna start is just talking about gear because where you choose to purchase a camera from is incredibly important and can potentially make or break the first images that you create. So if you're new to film, there's nothing more disappointing, and this is me speaking from experience, than going out, buying a camera, shooting a bunch of film, being really excited about the images, sending it off to get developed and scanned, and then realizing once you get the results back that the camera had some sort of issues, say light leaks or problems with the shutter. And you know, not only is it a gigantic waste of money, but it can just be a really disappointing way to start your journey with film. So it's really important to choose wisely where you purchase your first camera from. So for me, almost all of my gear I purchase on eBay. I find it has the best kind of selection and prices, but if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend it just because you're basically relying on the description from the seller and the pictures. And you know, there's no way to know for sure if it's gonna turn out how it was listed. So if you are buying your first camera, there is risk involved purchasing off eBay where you might get something that's faulty or not how it was described. But I would recommend making sure you buy gear that's been tested, preferably from another photographer. You know, maybe you know someone uh, who shoots with film or you could jump online to a forum like Fotrio. They have a really good classified section uh, or even go to a camera store. Lots of them still sell old gear and then you get something that's been tested and also has a guarantee. And you know, this is a really kind of simple place to start for this video talking about equipment, but it really is so important. I can't stress it enough because there's nothing worse than being excited to shoot with film, going out, making a bunch of images and essentially getting nothing back because your camera was broken. So the next point is talking about detail and resolution. And this is especially when working with 35 millimeter film, which is what most people are likely to first start out with. So if you're coming over to film from digital, like I said before, you're gonna be used to certain things. And especially nowadays, you know, megapixel counts are skyrocketing, full frame sensors are super popular. And the images that you get out of today's cameras are pretty high resolution and usually super detailed. But when it comes to working with 35 millimeter film scans, you know, this is gonna vary depending on if you get scans done at a lab or if you scan at home, but Regardless, there's still a pretty good chance that you may be disappointed in comparison to what you're used to getting from your digital camera. So I have a couple of images here just to use as examples. And this first one, this is a lab scan. This would be kind of a standard size, and this is around 3000 pixels on the long edge. So it's not that high of resolution. And as you can see, the details are just a little kind of mushy. Doesn't look that great. And this is what you could expect with smaller scans from a lab with 35 millimeter film. But if we take a look at this next image, this is from a Fuji X100F. This is around 5,200 pixels on the long edge and this is cropped. And you can see that it's really sharp and has a lot more detail than the film scan that we looked at. And here's two more images. These are identical. The first one is another kind of standard sized lab scan around 3000 pixels. The detail in it's okay, but I took that same negative and scanned it here at home on my CoolScan 9000, and it ended up around 5,200 pixels wide, very similar to the Fuji, and you can see that there's just a lot more detail in the image. So 35 millimeter film is a very capable format. Just know that if you're getting standard size lab scans, you may be a little disappointed with how they look compared to the images coming out of your digital camera. So some people probably will 
just jump right into scanning at home right away, which I wouldn't recommend right off the bat because before you make the investment, you should probably make sure you actually like the medium first. But if you are gonna scan at home, a lot of people end up with a flatbed, which you know can provide some pretty disappointing results with 35 millimeter film. And I had someone reach out quite recently to me who actually thought that they might be having focusing issues with their camera because the results were so soft that they were getting scanning their 35 millimeter film on their flatbed scanner. But really it just turned out that they didn't actually add any sharpening to the images afterwards. And you know, I've never been a fan of scanning 35 mil on a flatbed. I've talked about it a bunch before on this channel. So if you do wanna scan it at home, I'd recommend investing in a dedicated film scanner. I've done a review on this channel before of one that you can check out just because that is a way to get kind of the most out of that film and bring you to kind of a comparable result that you'd be used to when working with digital. But with all that being said, it is really important to understand that 35 millimeter is an incredibly capable format and when it is scanned professionally on some of the best equipment, you can pull some pretty amazing results from it. So, you know, don't be discouraged with the smaller scan sizes you might get from a lab because they're is always the potential. This is the beauty of working with film. You have a negative, you know, you can go and you can scan it at a higher resolution down the road if for some reason you need a bigger image file. But before we jump to the last one, I just wanna quickly talk about today's sponsor, Storyblocks, which is a complete stock footage solution that works off of a subscription model and gives you unlimited access to footage, sound effects, graphics, and other creative elements. For me, you know, doing filmmaking work and then also a bunch of video work here on YouTube, it's really cool to just have a platform that I can kind of go to even sometimes last minute to grab say like a sound effect, ambience, or even creative elements like film overlays and film flashes and stuff like that just to insert into my edit uh, without having to not only pay for each one but worry about kind of jumping around to a bunch of different websites to get those things. So it can save a lot of time and a lot of headaches in my experience. So really cool resource. If you want to find out more, there's a link in the description below. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about today and that's important to understand is just in regard to the overall look of your images when it comes to things like color, contrast, and brightness. So there's a good chance, you know, you go out, you shoot a bunch of images, you send your film away to a lab, you're really excited to see the results and then you get your scans, you get that email and they look nothing like you expected. And you know, it's really important to understand when you're scanning film that there's so many different things that come into play that could affect how the images look. And you know, you could take the same negative and you could send it off to 10 different labs and you're probably gonna get 10 different looking results. And this can be really confusing, especially, you know, if you've heard certain things about different film stocks. So for example, you know, you often hear that Kodak Portra 400 has softer tones and softer colors. Well, you know, here's a couple of images of mine that were shot on Kodak Portra 400 and scanned at a lab. And as you can see, they're actually very contrasty and also very saturated. You know, you can also get results back where there's like highlight detail clipped, shadow detail missing, maybe the the images are really contrasty and it can be confusing because it can make you wonder if, you know, there was an issue with your technique or the gear or the film, something like that. Uh, so it's really important to choose a lab that you work with just because, you know, there's a lot of labs out there where things are gonna be a little bit more automated and that's when you might get results back that either you weren't expecting or you're not that happy with. Uh, but if you work with one of the more kind of, I guess, higher end labs in the US, I think of like the Fine Lab uh, in Spain, there's Carmen C to Film Lab. These places really kind of try and tailor the results to your personal preferences. So they'll often ask for suggestions beforehand. They wanna learn what you like. And then also afterwards, they'll ask for feedback and then they'll kind of build this like file on their database. Whenever you send film in, they know your preferences and they can kind of tailor the results to your likings. And this is a good way just to get, you know, not only results that you're happy with, but also just get the most out of your film. Okay, so those are the three things that I think are probably most important to understand just to avoid any type of confusion or disappointment if you're just getting started out. But you know, working with film is definitely a little bit of a journey and there is a learning curve, but as you kind of dial in your process, it becomes completely worth it in my opinion. So hope this helped. Just wanna say thank you as always. Appreciate all the support and comments and all that kind of stuff. 
and I'll talk to you soon.